What's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 47, Menace and the Man. How are you today, Dennis? Pretty good. How many, ep- how many more episodes do we have together before I fucking can your ass? Oh, you know I'm not good at math. Was it 200? You said 333. We can go 200, though. We'll see how far we get. <laughs> we could revisit terms at 200. <laughs> 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 you know how it is. Yeah. It's an ever-changing game. Yeah. But 47, who would have thought we'd make it this far? Me. You did? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, things can go one and done. I'm not uh, much of a half-asser. You're an all-the-wayer? Yeah, all or nothing. I like that, I like that. Yeah. Uh, You know, one of your catchphrases, that's what I like about you. That I'm all or nothing? Yep, you give it your all. Yep, sure do. You put in a good uh, effort, no matter what you're doing. Here, hit up my guy. I'm going to start with Henry Hoof. Yeah, dude. Time is money to him. Did he really say that? Or you yes, made that up? Yes. No. Yo, he's like, he's one dude I would never want to owe money. So now, do you have funny Henry Hoof stories? I think. I think I could get him to say some funny shit. Because all I have with him is like, yeah, I train with you like once or twice. He's going to be like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> who the fuck are you? Who the fuck is this guy? I can name drop the shit out of people to him. But as far as like. Actual experiences with him? Not really. I just know he's a big Menace fan and a big Ryan LaFleur fan. That's what I want, like... Big Chris Wade fan as well. I, I'm i not... I don't know why he's such a Menace fan. What do you mean? I don't know. Like, I just... I, he's just worked with what, in my head, are so much more badass fighters. Than but, you? like, he puts me in the same, like, realm. Mm-hmm. I'm like... Thank you, but I don't feel like I figure you should be like talking down to me a little bit. I don't know. Why do you feel like he should be talking down to you? Just because he works with such legends and he's such a legend himself. I don't know why it's doing this, though. It's doing this shit again. Oh, sick. Yeah, where it's not letting me FaceTime him. So. Now, have you ever just punched in the number and it worked, or you have to have them already stored in your contacts? No, I just punch in the number, and it should show me the ability to FaceTime them, and it's not doing that. So I'll try him again. But yeah, one of my favorite things about him is he's one of those coaches that's like, no, 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 you do that shit, you're going to get knocked the fuck out. Like, he shoots it uh, straight. Yeah, he he's very... Get me back in there. Very honest with... Uh, and that's one thing why, like... Because there's certain coaches that you can work with, and um, there's yes men, and then there's guys that will give it to you very straight, you know? Yeah. So, and Henry's one of those guys. That gives it to you straight? Yeah. You know, if you did shitty, he'll tell you you did shitty, man. Mm-hmm. You know? That's what you need, though, because a lot of times you'll get that, like, jazzercise kickboxing coach that's going to get you fucked up in a real fight. Like, you're winning! You're dominating this guy. It's third round, you know? <laughs> yeah, like you look good or do that or, you know, something like that. But, yeah, still just giving me the call option. So bear with me for a moment. This is just embarrassing. Is it? Yeah. Well, I don't know why it does this to me sometimes. Maybe you should learn your programs. I do learn my programs. Is it because I don't have my phone with me? Maybe it's Stop. doing that to me. It could. It's fucking stupid. What do you mean? I don't know. This is annoying that we have this conversation every week. Is it? Yeah. Bro, it annoys. How do you think it? I feel? It annoys the shit out of me. Usually, it's I just click this and it comes up video. So then why aren't you ready? I was ready. You, you heard me call you, didn't you? I mean, yeah. I always work. Maybe you start calling other people. Well, I called him, and now it's still not giving me the option. We're going to lose him now. We're going to have a no episode today. No, we'll get him. It'll work. He's eventually. got shit he's got to do. I said 20 minutes, and it's already. What time is it? We just got 6 started. 6.09. I All told right. him we'd call him at 6. Stan? All right. I'm trying. I'm trying here. I gave him the heads up that we're, you know. That we're what? You know, putting, putting the last touches on at, at 5.56. What time did you get here today, Stan? I got here at 5.30. Fake lying to me. No. 
because I texted you at 515, 518, and I was all like, hey, pick me up in 15 minutes, and you said you were already here. I was already here. Well, that was at 517. You said you got here at 530. All right, so then that's what time I got here. At uh, Whatever you texted me is when I just pulled up. All right, so I'm going to try to enter it one more, and worst case, we're just going to call Henry Hooft. Uh, Why, that bothers you? Well, I mean, he's at the gym. Guys are training. Well, I'd FaceTime him from my phone, but my battery's dead. So we're going to get two minutes with him then. You knew we had the show today, right, Stan? Yep, there you go. I figured it out. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, that was so annoying. Uh... Yo! Yo! What's up, big dog? What's happening? Can he see me, Stan? What can he see? Yep, Henry, if you go think... if you go long ways with your phone, you'll see both of us. Wait a second. <laughs> Boom, there you go. Both of you guys. Uh, yep. You see how fat Stan is? I'm going to go to a place where it's more quiet because my these people here make too much noise. Ah, those motherfuckers. With, with all this aggressive music on here. Let me go to my little room here. Ong and Robin are close by too. Ooh, oh, oh the Hi. big dog. What's up? What's up, Robin? Oh, man, how you doing, hey, man? You talk, you talk to me first, right? First, yes. the boss. Then yes. The yes. Of course. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. My little room here. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I got it. I got it. We're doing it. Yeah, we figured What's it out. What's up, guys? Just hanging out, man. Yeah, Living I, the I, life. I know. I see. I, I, I saw you guys last week, too, on the podcast. You were doing good. We're trying. We're trying, I, Henry. This is the first podcast I do. Believe me or not, the first one. No, this is the first one you've ever done? The first one. I start with the real people. I, I don't do a lot of interviews anymore, too. I just I keep it real. Yeah. Well, that's what I was telling Dennis. The little bit I know about you and the few times I've been around you, you keep it, you're keep you as real as it gets as far as a coach goes. Yep. I try to. That's the way you got to be. Can't be a yes man in this game. No. No, especially not. Especially not the name of May. It's a, it's a, it's funny sometimes. You know, I'm, I've been doing this now for eight years, and sometimes, the, the more I look back, when I started was was really cool time, but now it's starting to get a little bit into a circus. So I don't want to spend too much time talking to people that make a drama show. You know, right? Not yeah. So, well, you, you know Menace very well. Menace is like a, a happy-go-lucky guy, so that's what we're going for. We're trying to bring out his personality with the show and just be positive in a world full of negative journalism. We're trying to be the positive side. Yeah, it's not not necessarily a negative, but that's just people that in real life I not really want to talk to. But with Dennis, uh, I want to talk. But I like to train him too. I like to train with him too. Uh, I gotta get the, I gotta get back down and get some training in. I just was joking with Robin. Robin speak. Uh, uh, Robin speak. But he's retired though. I speak. I'm retired. Fifteen years ago, I still spar every week. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Just. Put your mouthpiece in and start banging yep. a little bit. Right? Yep. I mean, it's not rocket science. You just got to beat the guy up in front of you. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have to get crazy. So no. what, what's your slogan? Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. <laughs> That's it. In life, in general, in training, in life too, I just, I don't do really special stuff. And uh, it works because I only do what I know. So that's not a lot, but the things that I know, I know, you know? So your style, though, for me sometimes is almost like, Stan, like, you know how, like, you know, there's there's a red apple and the question asks, what color is the apple? Red, blue, green, like, like and you're like, yellow, you're like, ah, this, the answer's too easy. It can't be red, you know? <laughs> so sometimes I have trouble with, like, so Henry's like, all right, step in, punch, step back, wait. He steps in, punch. I'm like, I don't, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I, I know. Go forward. <laughs> I think, I think in basic, it's good for everybody. But yeah. I don't, if you, if you, if you have like, uh, if you have some special, special uh, tools that you want to use. But in general, like, I like, I'd be a fundamental guy, again, in life too, but also in, in fighting. I think when your fundamentals are good, uh, uh, then you can do, and you have some extra tricks, is good. But if you're fundamentally good, then, 
if you fight ten times, you you win eight times. That's not a bad score, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and also, it's a uh, I'm a trainer, so let me explain this. I I heard the word coach a lot, but if I say coach in my gym, seven people will look up, you know. Uh, because I'm a trainer, I like to train people. I like to train the, the 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 guy who delivers food here. I like to train my daughter. I like to train the fighters. I like to teach. So I like to I like to give you some of uh, of the of the tools that I learned over the years from the best kickboxing trainers and fighters in the world. So that's what I like. I'm a real trainer. I'm not uh, the guy with the master plan and I give you a piece of paper and tell you what combinations you need to throw. I, I want to teach you some skills that you probably can use at the right moment and also I think it's important to know when to use a uh, certain stuff because a jab it looks very simple but if you use it at the right moment you can win a fight with a jab very simple and not get hurt you know but if it, if you make it yourself very complicated then the jab it will be complicated but so that's that's the way I think about it and and maybe sometimes uh, it's not working for everybody but most of the time it works so I mean I, I keep doing what I like and just teaching the simple fundamental stuff and uh, we have a lot of wins and a lot of champions, so it's worked sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. You have a lot of successful guys over there. So, I mean, so what I just took out of that is there's a difference between a coach and a trainer. For me, for me, in a sense, because, I mean, uh, and in MMA it's also different because you have a BJJ, wrestling, strength conditioning, boxing, yoga, uh, physical, uh, mental. Uh, you have so many coaches, but you have to fight yourself, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it starts with you, and if you have a guy with you, and, and you know that yourself, with Ryan uh, being with you for so long, yep. uh, it's very important for a fighter, and again, I know because I fought myself, uh, is that you have a guy with you that you can trust no matter what, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and that's very important as a fighter. But in general, I love my sport. I love kickboxing. I love striking, so I want to teach that, and that, that's a trainer. a trainer. A trainer teaches skills. I think a coach is more a guy who's putting a plan together with different coaches and, and maybe also uh, uh, in the fight, uh, like they come up with, with, uh, with, with uh, how, you, how you call that, game plans. Right. But I think game plan is for team sport. I think if you are a professional fighter, I think if you got the skills and, uh, and I not overcoach you in training and let you do your things, you, you find out that uh, it's important that you have to do it by yourself. And if you, if you, if you be brought up like that, you can take care of yourself very well. You know? So, Again, trainer, uh, tr training people is not the same as coaching people. That's for me. But I'm Dutch, so I think a little different too. So. <laughs> right, right. Now, I, I could uh, attest to that too in terms of like, yeah, you have like this game plan, but sometimes the game plan isn't be tough. Sometimes the game plan, it's never the game plan to dig deep, right? It's always like, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to hit up with this, it's going to be easy. It's never in there, man, find a way to win. Yeah, it's that's yeah. never in the game plan going into the fight. Otherwise, you might not take the fight because if you have to go to that dark place, that that lonely place where no one wants to go. Yeah. Why, why would you sign the dotted line? Yeah. You know, in our heads, when we sign up, I'm going to smoke this guy. It's I'm going to be in and out of there. But sometimes it gets to a point where it's like, fuck, man, yeah. do I and want I this right now? I think also you have to understand that in MMA, you got fight canceled like a couple of days before the fight. Your opponent's changing. Right, and, right. Uh, you can train for a southpaw, fat guy, small guy, yellow guy, black guy, a handsome guy, an ugly guy. Why not just train your skills and make sure that you have a, a good skill set that you trust because you've been training for so long. You trust your trainer and your training partners. And you go in there and you win 90% of your fights. I guarantee you that. And Sometimes you lose to the best guy in the division. Is that a bad thing? I mean, it's not a bad thing. I was with Anthony for years. Everybody out. He lost only to one guy two times to DC. So sometimes somebody's better than you, you know? That's just the way it is. But a game plan, again, as me as a fighter, when I was a fighter, I listened to my corner and I know what I want to do. If, if I knew that a guy had good hands, I would start with my legs. I have a thing in my head. But I also know that uh, sometimes these things don't work out. And then you just have to... Uh, Trust yourself, you know, and I think what you what is good because if your shin is hurt, your, your corner doesn't know it, and they ask you for a body kick, uh, and you can kick. I just yeah, had a then, flashback. Yeah, but you know what? The worst thing I don't really don't like about a lot of people when they say this, trainers or coaches, is that when the fighter wins, it's always the game plan. But when they lose, it's 
he didn't follow the game plan, you know? <laughs> like, it's, always yeah. an excuse. it's always an excuse for a coach or trainer because they are always good. They will always stay out of the uh, out of the shade, you know? So it's like, uh, no, he didn't follow the game plan. Well, what's the game plan then? Just to beat the other guy? Yeah, but we had this step and that step and he's supposed to do this and that, but he didn't do it. No, because he had an opponent, right? I mean, it's so... It, it, it's, it sounds simplistic, but... I think in, in our sport, a lot of people from outside, from other sports come in and they all want a piece of the pie. They want to show that it's very important to have special trainings and special strength and conditioning and special oxygen levels and special tanks. But at the end of the day, it's just another guy and you go fight another guy with skills and old school, I want to touch teeth. I, want to, I really want to see if my skills, my gym, my trainers are the best in the world. So I'm going to beat your ass and not... How many fucking time I was in the ice bath or in the sauna or whatever, you know? That, that, right. For me, that doesn't make sense. But that's just me. I'm just, again, I'm just a guy with fights. I was a champion before. I kind of know what it is. Well, so, you had a long career. How many yeah. fights did you have? In total? Do you yeah, even know? I, but, well, in kickboxing, in kickboxing, around 88 or something. But, yeah, wow. in total, yeah, yeah, a lot of fights. But uh, it, in kickboxing, it's different. You, you start very young. You have a lot of... Uh, junior fights and when i started my first fight was in 83 i'm an old guy you know i <laughs> so was i was minus I was, three uh, years old <laughs> yeah and i was i was 14 but so there's a lot of fights uh, in the netherlands every week you can fight in the netherlands it's crazy they're they're even now 18 90 year old they already have 80 fights you know because it's a, it's a, in holland it's foot, soccer and kickboxing that's what we do you know yeah so you started when you were 14 how long were you training before your first fight Three months. <laughs> oh, all right. So sink, months, or, sink uh, or swim pretty quick. The trainer said, you're good, man. Let's go. And I, I still remember my first fight. I was so scared of the guy because I fought, a, I, fought my, I fought a black guy, but he put a lot of Thai oil on him, and I was very skinny and tall. But he was smaller, but he was big. But with the oil, the smell, and his muscles, and the way he looked at me, he was, I, was like, I was like, shit, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my ass beat. And the first round was done. I came back to my corner and I was hyperventilating. <laughs> and I just want to get out of there. I just, I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. But my trainer was a, was a serious guy, you know. And he just kept me and he said, no, you're going to get tired. It's going to work. And, 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 and it worked. It, it, later on in the second round, uh, I, I did much better. In the third round, uh, um, I won the fight on points, but, uh, but it was so scary. But on the other hand, Right after that, I was like, this is the feeling I really like, man. Yeah. It's, nice to, it's nice to be scared because everybody's watching me. Everybody buys a ticket for me. I'm a special guy, right? So, right. So that how, took over. How many brothers do you have? Sorry? How many brothers do you have? Uh, uh, three. We are with four. Four boys. Three. And then where are you? You're the... You're the, Sorry? You're the oldest? No, no, no. I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm, I, have a, I have a twin brother. I have an older brother, a twin brother who, who is older than me, eight minutes. <laughs> and I got a younger brother. And did they fight? I know your one brother fought. Yes, my younger brother. My younger brother. My younger brother fought too. He was like, he probably was one of at this at that time one of the better talents that we had. I like really, I think he was be- he was better, much better than me. Uh, I was more of a harder worker. Later on, I became more better at it but he was just that natural guy that went in there and fought everybody and beat everybody and wasn't even interested in fighting you know and is that because you beat him up growing up or no man he beat me up oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he beat the shit out of me he's he still when he, he when he comes and visit he, he comes in the gym and he throws down right with the guys yeah he's fine he, the only thing he does he comes and he put him up no he doesn't even put him up he's in sometimes but now <laughs> now i think he puts but before not he puts puts his, his gloves on does rounds with everybody. He did that also when I was training with Peter Arts and all the guys. He sparred with them, and I, I asked because he had a. It's funny. He had a window washing. He has a window washing company, so he has to go up the ladders, you know. Yeah. So yeah. when he came to Amsterdam, when I was still training a lot with Peter and all the guys, and he was sparring hard, I always asked Peter Arts and the guys to kick him very hard on his legs because he had to go up the ladders, you know. <laughs> And then, but he, he, they always, always end up saying to me at the shower, like, no, man, your brother's fucking good, man. He blocks every fucking low kick. He's good. Jesus. So, yeah, he's, he's still good. And he has a he has a gym back in the Netherlands with a friend of him. And they, they have like 500 students, like kickboxing only, kickboxing karate. So, yeah, they're doing good. Was there any period of time in between when you stopped fighting and when you started training, uh, became a trainer? 
No, I was already kind of. I was at the end of my career. I was already. Uh, I was already training. Uh, I was. I was mainly a good. I was a training partner for a while with, with Ernesto Host and with yep. Peter Arts. So I was already training, coaching with them. You know, that, okay. that naturally rolled over. Uh, I did. I did only a couple of fights later on in 2004, five, six, seven, eight. I can I stopped at the. I was. I think 2000. That 2006 was my last fight, but. I was always uh, more into training at the, at, at, at the last couple of years than into fighting. So I was a training partner, but also training and training the guys. And uh, yeah, I rolled, up, rolled in very uh, naturally. I was already teaching very, uh, very young. So. Do you think you became a better fighter after you stopped fighting? Sometimes, yeah. you, sometimes you see that with guys. Well, you know what? I, the thing is with me too, I think that what makes me uh, okay, you know, as a trainer is that I, I wasn't the best fighter. I wasn't because I never won the K1. Yeah, I have, me, I won, me either. No, I won. I won. <laughs> no, no, no. But but people know you and people know me. That, uh, but no, but, but in, the, in the gym, I was much better. Like everybody is much better in the gym. But some people are not good at all in the gym and they're very good in the fight. Yeah. So I, they, they, they like to say that, oh, this, this is a gym champion or something. But I wasn't. I won also fights uh, for real. But, but uh, as a trainer, I was more, as a fighter, I was more fighting as a trainer because I was so technical that I was overthinking so much in the fight. I was more fighting as a sparring partner trainer. And that's what I say to my fighters too. It's very important. Don't be a, a, a sparring partner or a training partner too long for somebody because you're going to fight differently. You're going to fight. You're going to fight because if you're a training partner for somebody, that means you, you, you need to fight a certain kind of style, but also you need to take it easy on the guy. You cannot get hurt. And it will compromise you in your own style and your own uh, manners of fighting. So I do that here too. When I have people training with guys, I say, "Hey, listen, uh, you cannot be a training partner too long. If you want to be, you want to be a fighter. Don't, don't, don't fall for that. Because you be a training partner too long, you're going to fight like that. You're going right. to fight different. You know, fighters, fighters need to be alone, lonely. Need to be grumpy. Need to be, you know, need to be assholes. A sparring partner needs to take care of that grumpy uh, asshole guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, your, your mindset's going to be different. There's one person that becoming a uh, training partner actually made him a better fighter, and that was TJ Dillshaw. Mm -hmm. He was mocking fighting like uh, Dominic Cruz, and then he started adapting all these things that started working for him, acting like he was Dominic Cruz, and then he became a world champion. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I can't. He's, he is an exception, exception to the, to the fact. rule. Yeah. yeah. Henry just hit a nail on the head, like had me do some self-realization right there. That's probably what my problem was. I became too much of a training partner, and I took too long to finally start fighting. So I was good in the gym, but atrocious when I competed. Yeah, you sucked. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> no, bad. No, 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 that, that's bullshit. No, he, but don't, I've no, never, you're right. you're, I've never seen him mindset, compete, though. Your mindset, because you know, both of you guys know that, everybody knows that fighting is 75% with your head, you know, at least. Yeah. And the rest is your heart. I mean, skills and cardio, everybody can train that. But your your mentality. So if, if you have a mentality of, oh, I'm going to train. I'm going to train with this guy. Instead of, I'm going to, to the gym and uh, I'm going to beat everybody up. That's a totally different mindset. So, um, but, but for me, training was kind of, I always knew that I wanted to be a trainer. Again, because I like people. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just, I knew it. I knew when I was fighting, uh, helping people out and everything. So that's a little different. Uh Fighting needs to be a little different. How much time from after your last fight till you started training MMA fighters was there? Was there was that gap? Well, I stopped in 2006, but you know, a couple of my uh, my training partners was already fighting MMA. I mean, Gegard Musashi trained with me and Tyrone. Okay. Uh, 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 they sparred a lot together. Uh, and my fr other friend, uh, he's he, his name is Rene Rosen. Not a lot of people know him, but he fought on Pride. Uh, he fought against Josh Barnett. Uh, so we had a couple of MMA guys in the gym, but we, we did only striking. So when I moved over here, when I came here in 2011, I came with Tyrone to help uh, Rashad out for his fight with, uh, I think, Tito Ortiz. And then we came to the gym and everybody was, uh, everybody was sparring and we were like looking at each other like, this sparring here? I mean, what, what are they doing here, man? <laughs> and Tyrone speaking. No, I don't. We don't need to have. We need trainers. So we're going to train them. We're going to spar hard. We're going to change the whole thing because it doesn't look. It doesn't look like people know what they're doing. They're just throwing a punch and running around. You know. Right, so right. So uh, so 2006 to 2011, and then I started really focusing. And it took me a couple of years to really get the MMA striking kind 
the end because it's a little different. It's definitely different, yeah. That's yeah, definitely different because there's much more movement. The MMA, most of the MMA guys move much more. The cage is much bigger. You got the threat of the takedown. But in the beginning, I didn't want to listen to that. I was just like, in my head, I was like, no, it's the same shit. It's not a guy I'm going to beat his ass. Just make sure that you don't get taken down. And just a couple of years later when Greg, Gregory Jones and, and, and everybody, and also the fighters, I looked more at them. I learned more from them. I started to understand like, hey, you need to adapt a little bit better because it's working, but it goes up and down too much. It, it's not good. It's because uh, because I didn't have the right mindset to leave the whole kickboxing stand-up and to listen to three other coaches who are giving their thoughts on what we have to do to win MMA fights. Because right. they're knocking everybody out. Uh, Anthony was knocking everybody out. Everything was working. But then we got a period when it wasn't that so good. And then I started thinking about, hey, man, man, just open up. Open your mind a little bit and check check what they say and, and give, get the info from the fighters like Rashad and now Nick Lance and all the guys, Robbie Lawler, uh, all the guys around you. And we started slowly, uh, I, slow, I slowly started understanding that MMA striking is a little different. But again, fundamentally, the jab is still a jab. And you're talking about when you started your own gym. Well, I started my own gym just two years ago, but I was working before I was working with a group that was called the Black Zillions, the most stupid name ever, name, <laughs> stupid name ever, but it was a great team, great guys, you know. I agree. Great, great guys. Uh, you know that everybody was there, Ryan, all the boys were there. Great, great people, great guys. Um, and then the, my own gym is the, since 2017 now, two years, you know, so. Um, yeah, we had great. Eddie on last week, right? Alvarez, yes. And he was, he, he, he said he misses you. No, I miss, man, I mean, you know what, the only thing was shit with, with, with what happened, I, I wish I was at that fight when he won the belt, because I had fights, I had, when I started with Eddie, um, another great guy, great family yep, guy, yep. really, really, really great guy, uh, we started from nothing, and, and we started knocking people out, he, he head kicked people, uh, he didn't get hit so much anymore, uh, uh, we won the belt uh, against Michael Chandler. Right, because that was one of his things that he could he could take some damage, but also give it. He would outlast people a little yeah. bit. Yeah, real, well, but real I, life Rocky. I, I, I kind of wanted to get away from that a little bit, and you did. And I did, and I did, uh, and then, then uh, we won the belt, the belt, and we won a lot of fights until uh, one fight, uh, like the last fight when he fought for the belt. But that was understandable because Andy was uh, Eddie was training uh, with Mark and all the other guys and. Uh, and it, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to be there. On the other hand, uh, I was working all the time with him, so I would have it would have been cool because it would have been my first UFC belt uh, winning because I won the battle to belt uh, up and down, and uh, I won it with Eddie and I won it back with Michael Chandler. So, but it didn't happen. Uh, but I worked so good with him; he's so easy to work with. Uh, yeah. Such a good guy. And still, when I see him at one FC, I always support him, you know, because. Um, He's he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy and he he's a very smart guy. Yeah. Very smart guy. So so uh, yeah, Eddie's a great guy, you know, and he's going to do good. Hopefully, I see him in Japan when Ong is fighting. Hopefully, he wins that tournament. You know, uh, he got he has a tough fight. The guy he fights a good guy, but uh, Eddie's Eddie's different, man. He's just a different guy. Yeah, can, yeah. yeah. I agree. Because I remember, I remember, like I was saying to him, I remember moving around with him. I got this little period of time where I like I would drop my hands and I would I would miss the first couple punches yeah. and then he would hit me with the third and fourth. I was like, damn, cause usually when guys miss two punches in a row, they stop throwing. Yeah. And Eddie would throw a four or five piece every time. I was like, damn. I know. Yeah. Yeah. He has and the, the movement that he has and everything. And, and when we start implementing the kicks, the only thing I thought was, oh, listen, these two guys are just busting my balls. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And, and give me one minute. I need to explain them one more thing. It's very important, the details. Yeah. Let, they got to hear that, listen. right? Yeah, they need to listen good so they can learn. <laughs> no, but um, with Eddie, Eddie's first fight, they, they gave him Cowboy, you know. And the first fight in the UFC, and I was like, okay, he's Bellator, but, you know, Cowboy is, is a tough fight for everybody, yeah. especially in the first fight. Uh, because I didn't really like that fight in the just the first fight in the UFC, the cowboy kicker and Eddie a little different, you know. But uh, but after that he yeah he did everything good. Then he beat everybody. He became the champion. Uh, he made he made great money against uh, all these guys, uh, Connor, and now he has another chance to win another belt. So uh, yeah, again another guy, a little bit comparable to to Michael Chandler, who's here, who also uh, is the guy that likes to take a little bit. He, he don't mind to get a little damaged, and uh, we tried to get that out of the system too. And uh, 
because it's good when you can take a punch, but it's not uh, it's not good for you for yeah. your brains to take that, only that's, punches. That's why uh, Tyrone likes me. Who Spong? Oh. Yeah. Why? Because you can take a take damage. He's like this guy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no. I, got, Tyrone, I think Tyrone, I, I think remember. because Tyrone likes me, I think that's why Henry likes me. <laughs> He's no, like no, this no, guy. No, no. He gets his he gets his ass kicked, and but he just keeps coming, and then he wins the fight, and then, no, and, then no, we, and then Henry comes up to me. He's like, Tyrone's Tyrone's like a a multi time world champion, but he likes you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true. No, no, because we were at the fight, and you was you just. Into a, I don't know even which fight it was, but craziest fight, up and down. He was on the floor, and then he knocked the guy out. And he says, "Man, I, I really like this guy. I seen him fight a couple of times. He's so tough. He's aggressive. He goes to the floor. He stands up. He knocks people out. I'm a, I'm a fan of that guy. I'm a fan of that guy. And I told you, right? Yeah. I told you a fan of you. Well, yeah. you were like, I don't get it. I don't no. get why he likes you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know too why people like you, but yeah, probably because you're funny. Maybe because you're funny and you're and you're like you're, 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 you're like a little like little funny guy, you know. <laughs> I'm funny <laughs> looking. Like you. Hey, listen, you guys, you guys got some questions for these guys next yeah. to me? Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. okay, well, talk to these guys, and I okay. see you. Uh, I see you soon, and I see you soon too, buddy. Come right. around. Come yeah, fat's out here. You're the man, Henry. Bring Thank him, you for him. joining us. Yeah, bring him with you, and then we beat the shit out of each other just for fun. Yeah, I, oh, like I, that. I, I would love to beat the shit out oh of this guy. Oh my gosh, you better start doing push-ups <laughs> now, you fucking fat people. Push-ups? How are push-ups gonna help me? You gotta just get stronger or something. I no, I just gotta hey, listen, land the talk two. To these, talk to these two clowns, yeah. Uh, what's up? <laughs> what's oh up? shit, the dream team. What's yeah, going on, boys? Really Welcome popular. to Menace and the Man. Now, what do we got here? We got Ong. How do you pronounce your name? Ong La. Ong La? Ong La Song. Ong La Song? Ong La Song. <laughs> Ong La Song. I'm just gonna call you Ong La. Ong La. Ong La Song. Make it easy. Yeah. Just call me Ong. Ong. And then Robin. Yes. And then Robin Van. Robin. Robin Van. Van, how do you Roos- pronounce your last name? Van Roosmalen. Van Roosmalen. Yes, you make it easy. Robin is okay. Robin and Ong, yeah. thank you for joining us. Yeah. Stan yeah. the Man, you, Dennis the Menace Bermudez. I actually What's met. Your name? Stan the man. I met Ong. <laughs> I was I came down to H kickboxing like in May and I met you. Okay. Henry Stan, S T A N. Uh Henry Stan. wasn't there. Henry was like overseas with someone trained. I was I was talking to you, Big Steve. I wasn't sure if you even spoke English because you were just nodding your head. Like you had just gotten done training. Nah, so. he, he didn't want <laughs> to talk to you, that's why. Yeah, I, yeah. That's kind of racist. <laughs> yeah, hey, come on. No, he's that's got really good English. Yeah, he was just looking at me like, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, he walked he away. Yeah, he probably didn't like you. He didn't want to talk to you, dude. Yeah. Mm. No, that's not true. So, champ champ in one FC. Yes. And then you're, you got One gotta... championship. Oh. Yes, they changed the name. Yeah, it's now one championship. They call one FC. Yeah. They it's might be called one... one championship. Did it used to be called FC? Yes. But now they changed it to one championship. One championship. Okay. Yeah. And they're going bigger and better. They got big shows coming up. When's your next fight, Ong? Uh, October 13th. Oh, so that same card as we just had Eddie Alvarez on the show. That same card, right? You're fighting Brandon Vera. Uh, we're, 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 we're the fight. Uh, we're fighting that night. Eddie Alvarez is in the morning. He oh, the yeah, morning. yeah, yeah. We're the second uh, second card. Okay. And you got Brandon so there's, Vera, there's right? Two cards, there's two cards on October 13th. Mm-hmm. The first card is in the morning, and that's going to air in the United States on a uh, Saturday night. And then my fight's going to air in the States Sunday morning. Oh shit! So. What what which which is like the one you'd want to be on? Because I would I would rather fight at night. I think. Oh hell yeah! Who wants to wake up at seven in the morning? Yeah. But I also fight? want my shit to be saw at night though too. You know. Yeah, think about it. You gotta wake up. Doors open at seven thirty, so you gotta wow. wake up super early. You gotta wake up at like probably like five to get to the menu, which is like forty five minutes away. No, hell no. I, I, I'd rather fight at night. What That's time do you think Eddie will fight at, though? Uh, Eddie, probably around 10. 10 a.m.? Yeah, 10 a.m. So, I mean, that's kind of oh, similar yeah, to, like, no. training in the morning, you know, in yeah. Florida. Right? Do you guys start at 10, right? Yeah, we start at, like, 10.30, yeah. Well, he gets... But, get... but, but 10.30 over here is, like, you know, like, at around night. there. Yeah, it's at night over there. Yeah. So, will you go out earlier to get, like, uh, alchemated to the time and shit like that? Yeah. Okay. I'll go. Uh, I'll go about eight days early. Okay. Yeah. I'll finish camp here and then I'll go. Okay. And now you guys got you got a lot of people from the gym going with you, right? 
Yeah, I got Henry. I got uh, here, you know, Garrett, and then I got uh, Victor, who's kind of like you know body type is kind of like uh, uh, Brandon Bear. Um, and then Michael Chandler is going to be there too. Oh, uh, yeah, nice. and then and then uh, and then uh, Martin will be there as well. Well, you know, you guys know Olive, the girl with the mohawk and the tattoo. Who? You know the girl Olive that trains there with the tattoo on the side of her Olive, head. Olive, the girl, the girl with the fuck you on the side. Yeah. Of her head. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's a friend of the show. She was saying that a lot of people from the gym were trying to make plans to go to your fight. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, just to come and watch you put some smoke on Brandon Vera. Yeah. And that's an easy it's fight. For, that's an easy fight for you to get ready for, right? Because like he's like. A relatively big name in the MMA community, you know? Yeah. Well, now, this fight is champ versus champ. He's still the heavyweight champion, right? He is. He's coming down for uh, my light heavyweight belt. So. Yeah, so this is champ versus champ. Hang this on. Is, yeah. If you beat him at light heavyweight, or when you beat him at light heavyweight, do you say, hey, let's run it back at heavyweight? And then you can become the, uh, the trip? The trip champ? Hell yeah. Come then you'd be like, hey, hey, Henry, I'm the real Triple C. Yeah. I will do it now. Probably defend my middleweight belt. Bro, that would be epic. I want to stay active. I want to stay active. There's, there's no yeah, reason. Yeah, you could stay really active if you're, fighting no. three, if you're defending three titles. No, there, I no, like how you talk, man. I like that way. <laughs> there, there's no reason to, you know? What do you I mean? mean if you, you beat him at light heavyweight. Yeah, you, I did. I started at welterweight. If you right, beat him at light heavyweight, you're in his head, and then you just beat him at heavyweight and take his belt. Yeah, I mean, it, it's true, but th there's no reason for me to. Triple champ, that sounds cool. Yeah. But there's no reason. <laughs> no, he, he's, I, I get exactly where you're coming from. Like, that's not your weight class. That's not the weight yeah. class you train for. There's a little bit of respect in that. You want to yeah. stay true to your body type. I get yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But, 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 like I said, you know, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll fight him at heavyweight. Um, Robin, he's, Robin, yeah. it's sinking in now. It's sinking. I know. He's thinking about it. No, I, I talked to him after this, though. If, if it makes sense. You know. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. If it makes sense, it makes dollars. You got kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If it makes sense, dollar-wise, for sure, you know, I would do it. Um, but, but you know, my body type's a middleweight. Right. Which makes so, it even more impressive. of a legacy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, now, so, one's also planning on coming to America, right, after these cards. Yeah. So maybe yeah. you can sleep win. over my house, dude. You could sleep over Menace's house. I mean, <laughs> they might. You don't have a house here, right? No, not no, in Florida. In New York, in New York, I do. But uh, even um, they might go to New York, like try to do yeah. Madison Square Garden or something like that. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna probably come big when they do come here, because I, I, oh, sure. Ed, Eddie was telling us last week they're like Pride. They do the big show, the yeah. runway entr the rampway entrance. They announce all the fighters beforehand. They're trying to put on like yeah. a huge production, so. I could see them and, and doing. And there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of people that follow kickboxing in the United States too. There's a lot of people that follow. There's like a subculture of people that follows Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and there is a big like group of people that follows Muay Thai. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're aware of that, but you know, East Coast, all you know, all, is that all your base? Is the Muay Thai? Yeah. So so Muay Thai, they got the big stars now too in the uh, in, in, in the one championship for Muay Thai. You know, and, and they're bringing in a lot of, you know, great kickboxers, too. So they're doing a good job of marketing themselves. And it's going to be huge, you know, when they come here. Um, there's a lot of, like, big-name Muay Thai guys that a lot of the people, you know, the Muay Thai, the subculture of Muay Thai guys, uh, all all up and down uh, the East Coast know. So it's going to be big, you know, when they come to the States, too. Um, yeah, I think... UFC is a big, you know, MMA, for sure. But when it comes to Muay Thai... Uh, one champions got, uh, one championship has it locked down. I think one in the next couple years is going to contest with Bellator and get right on the UFC's heels as far as like promotions. They signed Demetrius Johnson. They signed yeah. Eddie Alvarez. They tried with Sage Northcutt. It didn't really work out. They got Brandon Vera. They got you. They got. They're trying to sign Robin. They're trying to sign Robin. <laughs> Robin, where are we at? Robin, where are we at? Are, you, are we are you still with Glory? Where I know you've done a few no, MMA I, fights. Bellator, right? No, I stopped Glory. I retired. So I'm fighting 26th of October for Bellator. Okay. Okay. Who's the, the, who's the victim? MMA or kickboxing? MMA. Okay. Oh, MMA. Yes, I'm fighting Chris Leoncini, if I'm pronouncing it right, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure, so. 
So now you're a kickboxing legend looking at your record. And like when Menace at first was like showing me, you, I was like, oh, I know that guy. I know the name and I've seen him like compete. And I've seen you do the pad work with Henry before. How yeah. long have you been doing MMA? I've been doing MMA back and forth for six years now. All right. But since January, I do it full time. Okay. Okay. So are you looking to make that the full transition into MMA? Yeah, I made in January the full transition. Yeah. And why is that? Because in kickboxing, I already beat everybody. So there was it's not like, really, so yeah. it's too easy. And, yeah, so money wise, it didn't get better. Okay. So I was like, I want, I want something new. I want a new challenge. I want to get better. So that's where MMA came. And I love, I love the game. So it's uh, something new for me. It makes me excited again. Has it ever crossed your mind to follow Tyrone and go boxing? No, okay. I would, I would love to do it. Because your shit fight, is the but... kick. Like you love kicking the motherfucker. And I love boxing too, but. That build up and all the the things so they take too long. I don't <laughs> yeah. I don't got time for that, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, even I think part of Tyrone's transition to just strictly boxing was the leg break, right? Yeah, maybe. Like I I think he was gonna dabble in MMA. He was still doing MMA. He was gonna box and he was still gonna kickbox. And then once he broke his leg, he just went strict. Yeah, that's what straight I mean. boxing. He, he, yeah. he had to do boxing because of his leg. That's what I think. Yeah. But. yeah. I had a similar break, and I don't want to throw kicks no more. So no, I, I, I can I see where he's coming. That. If, if I had that, we'll never kick again. Yeah. Yeah. Like every time you see Anderson Silva fight and he throws a kick, you're like, "Ooh, he's kicking with that leg." <laughs> no, yeah. Don't. Yeah, don't do that. He's fucking crazy. Nah. But what? Now, Tyrone's killing it in boxing, though. Yeah, he's knocking motherfuckers yeah, he out on the on the rag, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he got to have your opponent though. Who's he got coming up? Usyk. Let me see. Let me look him up. Usyk, the Korean guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, from Lomachenko's camp. Oh, that, uh, that guy okay. is good. That guy's good. Yeah. I don't know. Spong hits so fucking hard. Where's he training at? He's still in Miami, no? I think so. I'm not sure. I didn't see him in a long time. Yeah. But yeah. Should be. Should be. What's uh? So so Henry sent me a video of you guys. Were you guys? Just, you guys just finished some uh, strength and conditioning? Yeah, we just finished. Yeah, by don't by Corey Peacock strength and conditioning. Dude, Corey's the man. Yeah, bro. Yo, he killed us today, though. What'd you guys, what'd you, what do you have you guys doing? Uh, uh, deadlifts, uh, explosive jumps, uh, a lot of uh, pull-ups, uh, and then uh, medicine ball passes, overhead carries, and then sprints. Nice. So it's it's very it's not too much, but it's uh it's too it's much. Everything you need. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's not it's not like a it's not like a. It's not super long, but it's everything you need, you know? So, yeah. You know, that, that pace is so high. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not normal. Well, what, what I like about people... working with Corey is it's like right to the point. There's no, like, yeah. he doesn't shoot the shit with you too much. It's like work, 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 business, business, business. And then once yep. you're done, you're done. Then you can shoot the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yep. can, yep. you know. Yeah, that's what I like. 45 minutes, hard work. Dog, yeah. Home. Yeah. So for the people at home that don't know the schedule at Hard Knocks, uh, 365. Let's go. Let's go. Oh! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Dorino. What is up? What's going on, Dorino? Good. Let's go. I saw you got another fight. Another one. Let's go. Another one. Let's go. He's going <laughs> to choke out Gunnar Nelson. Right. If you want get hurt, just call me. You got my number. Boom. Yes, we will. Yo, that boy always ready. Replacement anyway. He fight. He's the go. Oh yeah, man. he's the man, Gil. But we've had him on the show before. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He comes to Long Island and does seminars every now and then. He's the yeah, fucking man, yo, that he's guy. Such a nice guy, bro. We, we gotta get you guys to Long Island doing seminars. Yeah, when you guys coming to New York? I'm, I'm I'm giving one in Philly, October 12th. Okay. And when's your fight? Your fight is October. 26. 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just looking up Spong versus Usyk. That's going to be yeah. October 12th as well. So. Yep. Okay. And that's I didn't realize Usyk was the I I pay attention to boxing but not as closely the lower divisions. I didn't realize this is going to be for the Cruiserweight World Championship. Oh damn. Yo, that, that's a legit guy. That's yeah, legit no, guy. this is I think he had a gold medal too. Yeah, he's a gold medal from the 2012 yeah. Olympics, but this is Tyrone's getting a title shot. Yeah, yeah like that's he's what there. I mean, yo. Yeah. So it's a good opportunity for Tyrone. Yeah. Oh, amazing. And but this is a one of those fights that two undefeated guys, like the winner of this, has a chance to be a superstar in boxing. Yeah. Yep. I and agree. I, oh, absolutely. So 
both of you guys got big fights coming up. How's the training camps going for it? It's going great for me. You know, uh, we did everything right. We've been uh, we've been uh, getting ready for the last six months. Uh, my weight's where it should be. Uh, for this fight, you know, I gained I gained weight. Uh, nice. Put on some yeah, put on some mass. That's fun. Like um, having ice cream at night and shit with whipped cream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what's his name's a big boy. Don't talk was, about that now, man. <laughs> he was on those uh, those Mexican supplements for a little bit. Brandon Vera. He was swole when he first went up to heavyweight. Ah, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's not gonna matter. He's gonna have to come down uh, to two twenty five, two twenty four, two twenty four. Oh, five. that that's right. Yeah. One championship does the kilograms. Yeah. Well, they do the different weight. They don't have the weight cut. Yeah. So you're you're hydrated. Yeah. You're in shape. Yeah. You know. Cause that so, shit so fucks you, you up. If you fought, if you fought, if you fought at lightweight, you would have to walk around one seventy for like three days. Yeah, yeah which is, uh, you've had to cut down to one eighty five and cut down to your weight. What it's better, I'm sure, right? The hydration yeah, test and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good for your head. You know, it's good. You can take a better shot. Um, it's good for like it's good for the competitors for sure. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. But it's a, it's a pain in the butt though, because like. Sometimes, you know, you work out and you drink water and you think you're hydrated, but then you pee in a cup and the, like, the, the pee is, like, dehydrated, you know? Yeah. It's too concentrated. So, like, it's a, it's a pain in the butt, you know? Do they watch you pee? Yeah, they watch you pee. And then, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cause yo, yo, in college, in college, we'd have to do, uh, to get certified to wrestle at a certain weight class. Yeah. The calibrations. And yeah. Whatnot. We would yeah. pee. And then there would be no, we would just put water in the cup and then oh no 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 you can't do that yeah it's very strict <laughs> and like uh, you got, some you know, of the guys hold your dick there. some yeah. of the guys wouldn't pass and my coach <laughs> would be like are you retarded just pour water in the cup you idiot <laughs> <laughs> so Robin you're no, fighting no. at featherweight right yeah I fight at featherweight yep how how tough of a cut you got to one forty five but in glory you fought fifty five right no uh, forty three forty three. Yeah, okay. that was the featherweight dad. So I fought first. I started at fifty five, but then I went back to right. Because I remember you at fifty five. Yeah, like, no, my cuts are always fucked up. <laughs> like menace. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, he used to cut to one forty five. Grumpiest motherfucker in the world when he was cutting to forty five. No, I wasn't that bad. Oh, you were bad. You had like, but you had like the edge, you know, like the fucking eye of the tiger. The, the, you were fucking the angry. Problem is, I gave, I gave too much weight out of camp. I'm a fat boy by heart. Yeah, it's hard. I dude, me Robin, me you're the same person. Like yeah. so like I've been I haven't fought since January and I'm probably like 173, 174. That's when I would get it up to I would get up to like higher, knowing that I had to like cut yeah. weight. Yeah. Again, yeah. so I'd eat it all, like, ah, uh, I might as well get the sin. So I like, you know. Yeah. I have the same thing because my last fight was September, last year September, so I didn't fight for a year. Yeah. So to keep that on the control was hard. Uh, so now both of you guys are living in South Florida, or what, yeah, I, yeah. What do they I have? Just Did, a house. I just bought a house in Lake Worth. So. All right, Lake Worth is nice. That's what's up. I used, to, I used to live in Baltimore, and then we sold our house. You uh, live. It was on the market for two weeks, and then it sold, and then we moved down here. You said Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. Yeah. And what? You were traveling down there just for like training camps? No, I, 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 yeah, I mean. I used to train in Baltimore. I used to fight out of Baltimore, and All then, right. uh, and then uh, last year January, I drove down to. Uh, but no, actually, last year, you know, two years ago uh, in December, I uh, I went to ATT, you know, to try out camps here, and then uh, I wasn't really satisfied, and I did one private lesson with Henry, and then after that, I was hooked. I was like, man, this is where I need to be. I did my first two camps here. My first camp, I won by first round knockout. Second camp, I won by fifth round knockout. So I was like, this is where I need to be. And uh, I moved my whole family down here. Oh, yeah. Henry's a fucking legend. Like, uh, you know, Ryan, oh, yeah. you, you guys know Ryan LaFlair. He tra come, used to come down yeah, there and yeah, train. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. developed and started doing the age kickboxing up here in Long Island. So, like, that's how I first got turned on to Henry was he yeah, came up yeah. and did a few seminars. And I remember the first time he did a seminar, he stopped it and was like, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. You see what this guy did? And he made the guy do it again. He's like, you do that stupid shit, you're going to get knocked the fuck out. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know? Yeah, he's so straight. I love it. Yeah, yeah you got to, And that's how you got to be. Like, when we first got Henry on just now, we were saying that that's the type of coach you got to be. You can't bullshit your fighters. You got to keep it 100, especially in a sport like this where you're going this out there. It's too painful, man. Yeah. It's too painful to, to bullshit. You know that expression, game of inches. 
and the consequences are too great. It's, it's like uh, yeah. human chess with dire consequences. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So you got to have a coach like Henry who keeps it straight, yeah. has been there, has fought, competed at the highest level. So, yeah, you guys got the right situation the, the down thing, there. The thing, the thing that I like about Henry the most is that, you know, he's not going to make you do uh, shit for no reason, you know. And he, he's been there. He's done it. So he knows how we actually feel internally. When we go on a fight, he knows how we feel. Uh, unlike a lot of the coaches out there, you know. Never been there. Never been there, and they tell you to do shit. And in your head, you're thinking, motherfucker, you go try to do that. You know, you're going to get knocked out. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you do that shit. Yeah. Like when he's telling you, you, you got to do more rounds. You got to keep going. You got to tough through it. You go yeah. fucking tough through it. You yeah. do that shit. You never been there. Yeah, exactly. That's but why Henry knows, so it's good, man. It's yeah, good. Oh, Henry's a fucking legend. That's why we were so excited when we were getting him on. Then he was like, oh, I can throw these two on for you. We were like, oh, shit, 100, <laughs> do that. 100. Yeah, he gave us a little surprise, surprise. He was like, oh, hey, guys. <laughs> so Go now ahead. we got the champ champ, one of the best kickboxers alive. Now, would you call yourself a kickboxing guy or a Muay Thai guy? I will call myself nothing. I don't care, whatever. If they if they call me tomorrow to do a wrestling match, I do it too. So <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I do a jiu-jitsu match. Yeah, <laughs> a jiu-jitsu match. Hell yeah, I don't care. Bro, we might hit you up one day. Me and Menace right. might get into the promotion. I don't care. Yo, I don't care about belts. I don't yeah. care about collars. Real quick, real quick, cause Ung, I know you have like a wife and kids, right? Yeah. Robin, what's your status, yeah. dude? You single? I have nothing. I'm single. No kids. So all right. So you're from like Amsterdam. Huh? Excuse you're, me? You're from, like, you're from, like, out Amsterdam, no? Yeah. And now you're here in the States, like, what's, what's, the, what's the move? How what, are you picking up the ladies? What's the roster looking like? How many the girlfriends roster, do you have? The roster is looking like training camp. No women of all. No women? Oh. Nothing. Makes your knees weak. <laughs> and my head. <laughs> <laughs> and your head? <laughs> Definitely makes so, the uh, head weak. I don't know about the hang knees. Hang on, but though. you haven't fought s- since September, so you got to be backed up then, no? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so then, the next guy's getting knocked out. Yeah, but now it's focused on training. Now it's no fighting anymore. No women. Focus. Okay. After that, we can go back again. Okay, okay. So, yeah, Henry invited us down there. When I come down, me and you are going out, Robin. We're going to go clean up. Go. Let's go. I'm ready. And Ung, if oh, you want to tell if you want to tell the wife you're like with us playing video games or something, that's up to you. That's up to you. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go corner him in Amsterdam one, one of these days. Yep, for sure. <laughs> all right, all right. So now Henry travels with you guys, right? Like I know he just said he's going to one. Is Henry gonna be going with you to the Bellator? Where is your Bellator fight? Uh, I'm not sure because Michael Jones is fighting that same day yeah. in in somewhere in China or whatever. Oh, no, Singapore. Singapore. Yeah. Singapore. yeah. Who's he fighting against? Sean, Sean, Sean will be. I, I think Sean, Sean, my friend Sean Soliano is going to be there. So, same thing. Sean just got the dope knockout not too long ago. Yeah, he did good with that. Yeah, yeah, he slept that guy like no one's Yo. business, man. Yo, Was he, it in CES? That guy quick. Yeah, huh? CES. CES, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Sean doesn't have a lady either, right? No. So, you guys, do you guys wingman each other? I know. It's not really not winning. We just go where we want. No, like when no you guys winning. go, if you guys go out and you guys yeah. go and like try to pick up chicks and stuff like that, do you, are you guys you guys go as a team? No, it's everybody for everybody. Everybody, you won't be like that's oh, not man. really winning. You know? <laughs> no, there's no winning in this matter. Right. You know the problem is the wingman always get the ugly girl. I mean, both don't want well, ugly. you gotta be a team player. You gotta be a team player. That's how it works. Yeah. That's how it is. But hey, if you both can get a good girl, why you have to be a wingman? This is true. This is true. Well, sometimes well, you got a wingman for two two good looking chicks. You know that I'm happens too. Wingman. He's the older guy. He's the wingman. I'm the wingman. <laughs> But yes, Michael Johnson's another one. He's been on. He wasn't on the show officially, but when we went to Florida back in May, we did like a fight night. We had him come out and party with us and whatnot. We actually yeah, does he bring his dog to the gym? Pablo. Yeah. We lost Pablo oh, at one shit. point. Oh shit! Yeah, Hang on, we. Uh, I didn't lose him. Our house, our people that we were with, we lost Pablo at one point. So it turned into <laughs> oh, like shit. the whole Maybe house bad, huh? looking for Yo. Pablo, and Pablo was. Marquez lost him too last week. <laughs> Yeah, he said it happens all the time. So we were like, oh, all right. But then we couldn't find the dog. The dog was on the side of the house eating like a block of cheese. 
Oh, so yeah. l- luckily we found yeah. the dog. That, that dog is struggle, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a big Pablo fan. Big Pablo fan. Yeah, that dog is nice. Bro. What's what's oh. my boy uh, Usman been up to? He don't yo tell him when I see him again I'm gonna fuck him up. He doesn't answer my texts anymore. He doesn't call. He doesn't write. Yo he's yo he's big time in me, man, and I don't like he's it. He's still on a plane. I, think no, I, know, I know. Hang on. I'm, I'm not saying about. I'm not. I'm not saying today. I'm just saying in general. He won the belt and was like, eh, Men- yeah. "Menace is too short for me. I'm not into this no more. I'm done with this." <laughs> yeah. No. He, yeah. Yeah. He he took his, his Instagram picture of him on a, on a jet. Yeah. What's Henry, Henry Cejudo? They're still in that jet. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're making out? Yeah. It might be. Oh wow! I just put that together. He replaced you. He was like, "Menace used to be my little bro. Now I got Cejudo." <laughs> no, he replaced that. you. Oh he's shit! Like, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm way more. I'm way better looking than Henry Cejudo. Yeah, yeah. Henry, Henry's been on the show before too. I don't want to insult him, but he's little. He's, he's like little. five two. He wasn't here oh, in person. Shit. No, I've seen him in person though. Before he's fucking tiny. Oh, five, he's two, really man. tiny. Oh, you have size no, on him. At least. Hang on, he's like five four. Is he? Yeah. Five four. <laughs> yeah. He's better than five two. Menace is five seven with good shoes on, so yeah. Menace got him there. Yeah, with good shoes. But yeah, tell Usman five to stop four. ghosting Menace. We need to get Usman back on the show. Yeah, next time I see him, I'm gonna headbutt him in the nose. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will tell him when he's here. Fucking break his damn nose. Tell him Menace Bermudez and his chubby co-host are looking for you. Yeah, he's fat as fuck. I used to be skinny. Now I'm fat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's that good life, yo. Yeah, yeah I just eat. Belly. You know what it is? I haven't trained since I broke my leg. I trained like once. Oh, shit. You guys, uh, have you guys ever heard of John Gotti? Maybe. Who? He's a mafia guy. You guys know like the Italian mafia? Yeah. It's Supposedly. Movie, right? Yeah, like they made a movie. His son trains, and it, I was wrestling with his son at Long Island MMA, and his son went for a body lock and Fucked fucking his ass up. snapped my leg in half. It was an <laughs> it was an accident. Yo, Robin, Ryan Flair was like. All right, man, just get off, the, get off, get towards the wall. Well, uh, <laughs> his leg was broken in half. Well, he at first when the flare said that He's he like, didn't realize. On, move over. Uh, yeah, just, just leave, man. Just go. <laughs> Luke was in town, so him and Luke were having Vicente were having like a hard round. I got hurt, and everyone stopped because it was a loud pop. And then the flare was like, "Yo, just do us a favor and just like get off the mat so we can finish the round." <laughs> and then I was like, "Yo, I think my leg's broken." Get out of here, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. Man. I think it's broken though, and he was like, "Yeah, but you know, come on, just get off the mat." Who, who's Luke is next fight? <laughs> He's got a good one too, right? Luke, Luke is fighting yeah, Wonder Boy. Wonder oh, Boy. Yeah, that's a great. That's fight. a nice fight. Yeah, I love that fight, man. Yeah. That's a fight. If he wins, he's a fight away from a title shot, you know, yeah, or in too. the talks. Yeah. And that's a good matchup for him too. Like Wonder Boy just backpedals and Luke goes forward. So. Yeah, yeah. And Wonder Boy just lost. So. Oh, uh, Henry said we gotta stop. Why, his phone's dying? <laughs> yeah, we got 5% left battery. Yeah. All right, no, so that's good. thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate thank the time. If we thank don't you. speak we'll to you. Yeah, I'll get you guys. In, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, DM you guys, and I'll get you guys individual numbers, and we'll, we'll nice. set up for another time for, okay. for sure. Good yes, fight sir. to both of you. Right. Good thank fight you to back. both of you coming up. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, Bye-bye. guys. Take care. I Oof. mean, leave it to me. Like when we're don't have any guests to get some some G's, some goddamn G's on yeah. the show. Well done, menace. Good thing you don't just get the guests because we'd be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> we'd have on fucking like male strippers all the time and shit. No, we'd have on people. Your biggest guest to, to date is Tito. No, my biggest guest to date is probably Robert Whitaker. As far as relevance of today's world. Did I fucking text him? No. I got Robert Whitaker. Or and I got Cejudo too. No way. Yes way. Yes way. Who'd you get? Usman. It, you got them using my name. Alright, how else am I gonna get him? I'm gonna say I'm guy Stanley doing a show. I'm gonna say, Oh, I do a show with Dennis. What do you want me to say? So I got them all. Alright, so we'll give you that. <laughs> you got them all. That works. Uh, um so what we got? Talk about the fights that just went down, and then... Well, a funny thing. Remember how we talked last week about how... If it's so funny, Stan, why aren't you laughing? 
Well, because I'll get to that point and you'll oh, laugh at okay, it. Okay. People are saying how I'm. But first off, people were saying me and you were casuals and we don't know shit about fighting because we. I put up a post like, oh, can anyone? Be, I don't. <laughs> can anyone beat Khabib? Remember how we were talking yeah, about like yeah, who could possibly yeah. beat Khabib? And I said how like because I didn't think him versus Connor was that one sided. Granted, he fucked Connor up. Connor's the only person, in, other than Gleason T. Bow, to win a round against him. And everyone's like, you know, like Khabib Nut Riders. So They're just like, nope, he fucking destroyed Connor. Connor has no chance. All right, maybe true. But I had to put him in the conversation of saying who could possibly beat Khabib. You know, there's only three or four guys that could potentially be on the list. So people were just saying how me and you don't know shit. And we're both casuals. They kept saying the guy on the left is clueless, meaning me. Because I threw Connor into that conversation. And because we threw an ally, Quinta and Gregor. They were like, no, Gregor for sure. What has no chance or ha- has a chance? Has a chance. Yeah. Has a great chance. Yeah. But then even like, I Hang acquaint- on, I'm still waiting for the knee slapper here. Well, that's the knee slapper. I figured people were making uh, fun of me and saying okay. I don't know shit. Yeah. Well, people making fun of you makes sense, but that you don't know shit, I'll back you up. Why? Because you make fun of me. That's why yes. it makes sense. Yep. Yeah, but you got horrible material. You keep telling everyone I'm fat. What are you gonna and, do if I get skinny ever? And hang on, summer's ending, my friend, and you are pale as fuck. I had a tan for a few weeks, but then it disappeared. So, which I brings going my, outside. my my point is still like you are pale. You're Puerto Rican. You have darker skin than me. What the fuck you want me to say? I don't go tanning. Go tanning, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That used to be my life. My life used to be like a, Jer- a Jersey Shore character, Jim Tan Laundry. GTL. GTL. Now I don't really do my laundry as much. <laughs> I don't go to the gym, and I never tan. Never oh tan. Oh my god. Not big into the tanning game anymore. Wow. But yeah, that's too funny. Like uh, when I went down to H Kickbox and like after you had left and I stayed a couple a week to party. You stayed like two more weeks. Yeah. One uh, like 10 days. But I went to H Kickbox in the one day and Henry was I think he was in like China or something cornering somebody. But I saw Ung. I knew who he was because I watched one F one championship, but I didn't think he spoke English. So I just said hi to him. Yeah. You know the guy Big Steve? <laughs> yes. I was talking yeah. to Big Steve. Yeah. I exchanged information with him. I was talking about getting him on the show. He's someone that we should actually get on too. He was there working out with those guys. He's a fucking stud in Bellator yeah. right now. Yeah. And then I talked to him a little bit and then Ung like walked past. I like shook my shook his hand, introduced him, and I didn't think, let me keep talking to him because I thought he didn't speak English. Yeah. So I just like turned, he walked away, and I was like, All right. And then I went over and talked to, you know, uh Litton Vassell? No. The English dude. The bald-headed oh, black English yes. dude. Yeah, I started talking to him. And he was like, yeah, I'll come on this show anytime. And I just never followed up with that it. That was but. a Jamaican accent. Yeah, I thought it was a black. Uh, but Ung, when I was down there training, uh, I just I thought the same thing. I was like, this guy probably doesn't speak very good English. His English is amazing. Whatever. But then he started speaking. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Boy, was I wrong. His English was fucking amazing. Ama- better than mine. Well, better than yours? I don't yeah. know about that. Well, I slur sometimes. I mumble. You mumble what? Words. Yeah, you do. Especially when you're drinking. Ooh, you know what? And then we didn't get to ask Henry. I wanted to ask Henry about... He he mentioned Rumble, but then we didn't get to be like, yo, Rumble's returning. What do you think about that? I'll call him next week. He'll come on next week. Yeah. I mean, Gilbert Burns was just saying, hit him up. So do we hit up Gilbert Burns? Right now? He just was saying in the thing. No, he's going to train right now. Was he? Yeah. Are you sure? Was he sweaty? Like he just finished training? Yeah. No, he wasn't. I think he was. Right. R- run it back. Well, I can't so run it I back wasn't. like that. Well, I'm saying in your own life. In my own life. Yeah. All right. Well, what'd you think of Justin Gaethje's performance this weekend? I thought he looked really good. I lost a lot of money. Oh, yeah. You just started making weird fucking bets. No, not really. I mean, you thought it would go longer, but then I, I mean, I th- usually cowboy. You thought it would go longer, and then I started giving you all the examples of it ending in the first round. Yeah. And I thought maybe with it, that new thing, you see. You know what it is? Pumpkin beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what it is, too? Remember how we talked about it? Since he changed his fighting a little bit after those two losses, he doesn't do that little hanging in the pocket and fucking crazy cover-up thing. Now, when someone throws at him, he just backs up. Right. Gaethje. Yeah, like he controls the the exchanges now, as opposed to what he used to do, which is hang out in the pocket, get hit with an uppercut, get hit with a hook, and then land his shit. So, so I think he figured it out. And, uh, I mean, people will fucking jump all over us if we say it. Who's the... Ken Gaethje. 
beat Khabib. Right. And then... Do you think? Can... Do you think Gaethje has a chance against Khabib? Yeah, I think he has a chance. Good chance? Slim chance? 40% chance. I mean, people are going to crucify me for it, but I think Tony Ferguson has a great chance. Nope. I'm going to say Tony Ferguson has a 20% chance. I know. You've said that. You don't think he has a great chance. I think he does. I think... So, no one's Khabib has fought has had a good ground game off their back. If they do... I it's... think Connor has a better chance of beating Khabib, but I think Ferguson could beat Connor. Yes. I mean, people hate on Connor. That's what it is. Like, Styles I, make fights. I'm no longer a big Connor fan. I'm not a huge supporter of Connor. Like, that's how people took it when I posted the YouTube video. People were like, oh, this is a Connor nut hugger. Definitely a Connor fan. I'm a huge Khabib fan. I fucking love Khabib. I think he's funny. I think. Would he's you kiss him if he came in the room? Not on the mouth. Maybe on the cheek. Oh, okay. Like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> the cheek. Get real Italian on him? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't kiss him in the fucking mouth. He'd fucking be real insulted. I don't think he's into, you know, that crowd. <laughs> but let's say he was into it. Would you do it? Uh, no. I oh. wouldn't. I'm not. Well, in, then you I, don't really love him. I'm not into that crowd oh. either, so I'm not going to change my sexuality. To appease a fighter I enjoy. But I think... I honestly think no one's beating Khabib. But Gaethje, Connor, Tony Ferguson. Those are the three that are at the top that could possibly do it. We threw in Gregor. We threw in Iaquinta because Iaquinta went I'm five with him. I'm Gregor before Connor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I don't think Gregor's going to get there in the time. Unless Khabib sticks around. Oh, right. Like Khabib's next fight is going to be one of those three. It's going to be Connor... Tony or Gaethje. I think they do Tony versus Khabib, and then they do... Ga I, I would fucking pay $100 for pay-per-view if they did Gaethje versus Connor. I think that fight would be fucking amazing. You? I wouldn't pay 100 You know what I mean. I wouldn't pay 100 I'd fucking stream it illegally, most likely, but... <laughs> But who uh who would you put your money on in that fight? Because you're obviously a betting man. Uh, Let's let the, who who'd you lose money on this weekend? Krylov. He thought Nikita was his name. His I name? don't. I don't know. I just you don't saw, even know the guy's name. I you, saw. I saw he was what Ukrainian. Ukrainian. He thought and he, he was very young. He, he thought, was 29. He thought Krylov was, was going to be. Was he 29? 27. 27. Like when I was 27, I felt I looked. I was fucking so hard, and, like, I was just felt like an, an animal. You were in the fucking zone when you were 27. I haven't been 39 yet, but I imagine when I feel 39, I lose to 27-year-old me. Or 39-year-old you would be like Glover is. Like, right, it's f fucked up, and not fucked up, like, I don't mean to be a dick, but, like, if we would have had a two-minute conversation before you made that bet, you would have got that information that I said after <sighs> you made the bet. Yeah, but we spoke about it, like... When's Glover's fight going to come when he's just fucking old? Yes, but then my segue off of that would have been, now that Glover is old and he's 39, the last couple fights, he takes people down. He doesn't sit there and play rock'em, sock'em robots. Like, pretty much since the Gustafsson fight, since he yeah. got knocked out in the fifth round, he takes you down. He doesn't play that, oh, you're young, you're quicker than me. But he still has the power where if you just fucking just, uh, yeah. like, you're like, oh, my God, I got hit by a ton of bricks. Yeah. So what we should have done today is we should have started maybe a little later and then we would have talked to Robert Whitaker. But I don't think we're going to stick here till nine o'clock. No so what we'll do is we're going to call up my friend Tony Palmieri. Remember Tony? Nope. You met him at the NYFA. He's going to put on shows with us eventually. We're just going to talk about the boxing coming up this weekend. He has an event coming up. I forget what day, October something. Ooh, and then the other one is we didn't talk about last week. It looks like Woodley might get the next title shot. Is what it seems like over Covington. Mm. Covington's getting bypassed. Really? It looks like it. I, I I remember I was talking to you, like when we were hanging out off of that. Like Woodley was writing, like sliding into fucking what's his name's comments on his Instagram. Oh, onto uh, Usman. Usman's, right. Yeah. So. I think the UFC might be, like, upset with Colby or done with Colby. I don't know, but they're not giving – it doesn't look like they're giving him the next title shot, which is fucked up because I think he deserves it. But – These guys get just – just yes, you've proven yourself, and, like, yes, there are guys maybe making more money than you, but, like, if you don't lose ever, you could demand 
infinity of money. So what would you do if you would just keep fighting? Just, all right, you're not giving me the title fight? Give me whoever the fuck, and I'm going to fuck him up. And just keep winning till it's undeniable, or... Yeah, I mean, that's what you do. That's what it is. I mean, like, in a wrestling tournament, there was never, like, eh. Well, like, what happened is Woodley... Why am I going against number three? I'm the number Woodley two. Woodley lost to Usman, and now it might turn into Woodley just sat out and recovered his injuries as Usman recovered his injuries, and they might just run that rematch back. Shit, Usman hasn't fought since then, huh? Usman hasn't fought, neither has Woodley. They both just been... Ch- Woodley was supposed to fight Robbie Lawler, right. and then he pulled out, and Covington stepped in. Destroyed, I, the fucking annihilated Robbie Lawler that fight. Ro- um, did we say that? I forget if we said that. Robbie Lawler's got his next fight booked as well. Who's he got? Ponzinibbio. Wow. Yeah, that's a tough one. Another American top team guy. Wow. Yeah. Interesting Interesting landscape right now in the world of weight division. Like, even that, like, like Woodley fought, like, four times in, like, 13 months or whatever the thing was, and people didn't like him as the champion. Or at least he had critics that were like, oh, he's always hurt. He's always got an excuse. I know, like, not saying you said it in a negative way, but you've said, like, you noticed as, like, a casual perspective that he has surgery or he's hurt after every fight. Woodley. It, Woodley, yes. Right. But he fought four times in, like, 13 months, defended the belt, won the belt, whatever. Usman, people make it like he hasn't fought in forever. He hasn't fought since... March. Not the longest layoff, but... March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Half a year. Yeah, but how often do champions fight? Twice a year? Yeah. So if he fights in December or if he fights in the beginning of January, February? Now, Val- Bullet Valentina has fought two times. Yes. Since Usman got the title. Sometimes it's different, yeah. Even What's-His-Name has only fought once since he got the... Well, so Cejudo, so, yeah, Cejudo yeah. fought Dillashaw and then was defending his 125, then fought for the vacated 135, and he hasn't fought since. Hasn't, yeah, but those are all pretty quick back-to-back, though, right? Yeah, but, like, you know, like, sometimes champions, like, it happens that when guys aren't champions, they get hurt, and they have to take six months or eight months between fights, nine months. It's just when you're a champion, it's almost, like, glorified, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. people pay more attention to it. Like you're holding up the division or some shit. But you know how fans are. People think me and you don't know shit. Luckily, no. Well, I don't, so. But that was my defense to you. I was like, I train my whole life and I watch every fight. I'm like, this guy has 20 fights in the UFC. Do you know more than either one of us? To like, you know, they're calling me and you casuals. I think they're casuals. You know, like facts and such like that. I actually know what it feels like. Yeah. At the highest level. At the highest level. Yeah, but then even, like, your take on it, too, is, like, who you trained with and shit you've seen, like, being... You've been a fly on the wall in some fucking dope training rooms. For sure. You know, even, like, look what just happened at H Kickbox. And, like, right now is, like, the fucking pro class. So there's, like, fucking... Not pro class. All the pro classes are 10 a.m. And then you come back for skill work in the evening, whether that's... Well, then... That's strength and conditioning or mitts You saw what was going on there. Private lesson. That was skill work, so... People were getting their skills in. It's fucking. There's a difference between watching it on TV versus being actually in the room with some of these guys and seeing how they train and actually talking to them outside of fighting, knowing how they feel. But we were getting, uh, especially me, I was getting roasted hard. And it was only literally it was. You should get roasted, Stan. Bro. It You're was, a ginger. I don't, I'm not a full ginger. I got strawberry hair. Strawberry brown. But we were getting roasted hard because we were hypothetically saying who could possibly beat Khabib? Not these are the guys that beat Khabib. Right. We were just having a discussion like. Whoa, try- hang on. I feel like these people's opinion. Like, what do they say to you that you're I feel like you're like defending. That's very hard. Like this. They just called me clueless and said, I don't know shit about fighting. Well, and then they said both of us were casual. You know funny when people call me like a pussy. I'm like, oh, yeah, you got me because <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not Stan. You got to just know what you know about yourself. Uh, Obviously, you're like, am I clueless? Because like, no, I because when when you, if someone's a liar and you call them a liar, bro, you those se- are the ones that defend themselves harder than someone like, oh yeah, I'm a liar, you know? Yeah, but there's always exceptions to that rule, and I consider myself one of those exceptions. I just like arguing with people when they're making stupid points. So I put up, I, well, even this, and there's this one guy who actually was making good points, and then where his argument collapsed was, he told me, you watched Conor versus Khabib. He told me that Khabib took the third round off. 
and chose to get outlanded and get his takedown stuffed. And then I was like, so by your logic, you just told me that Khabib said, you know what, I'm going to get punched in the face this round, and I'm going to shoot takedowns and get them stuffed just because, eh. Nobody does that. Who does that? And then he tried to tell me experts have said this. No. Khabib was gassed and fought accordingly. He didn't shoot half-hearted takedowns and get fucked up because he was like, oh, Connor's a pussy. I'm going to let him punch me. No guys ever, no fighters ever going to do that. So I put up like a pretty, like what I thought was a, like a dope workout. I just, I say it wasn't a dope workout. It was a workout I did. And I was like, you know what? Let me show people my workout. And this guy, one of my fan pages said, I used to like you as a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. All right, actually, now this guy looks like an idiot. I used to like you as a fight until these dumbass workouts. And then, like, even people were attacking us for saying Ally Quinto or throwing Al in there. And they were like, what, do we give out fucking medals for getting your ass kicked? Then I look at, oh, shit. Is this a, is that a guy or a girl? Oh, my God. Hang on, Stan. Is that a guy or a girl? <laughs> Ooh. Which one? The... <laughs> no wonder you don't like me anymore because I'm actually, like, taking care of my body. Yeah. I don't, I'll tell you what. I don't like that guy. Yikes. Hey, you know what I did? I liked his comment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I liked all the comments that were negative. Like, one person said that the guy on the left is a stupid fuck. <laughs> and I commented, yes, he is. I agree with you. Uh, you should have said fat, too. Bro. What? You call me fat because you're used to me being skinny. No, and I'm no. chubby now. No, I look at you and I think you're fat. There is actual fat people out there. Yeah. Yeah, you. No. Not me. There's actual <laughs> fat people out there that are like fat, obese. Okay. Large. And? I'm eight weeks away from, I'm an eight, a six to eight week program away from being fucking ripped up again and in shape. But you're not. So. But I am though. There's other people that no, are actually I, no, but, fat. But you're not in shape. So You invited Adam, me to work out today. You're trying. And what'd you say? I was at work. But what'd you say? Nope. All right. <laughs> nope. What's that? What's that thing you keep saying? Uh, when do you plant a tree? No, what's the thing you keep saying? When's the best time to plant a tree? I have no idea. When's the Yesterday. Best? No, not that. No. The other little expression you've been saying for like the last week. Like, no chance. Is that what it is? What is it? No way. No way. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> not now, not never. Not now, not never. Exactly. Not, not my chair, not my problem. No chance. That's what I always say. Yep. Well, so who are we talking to right now? Tony. He's got a boxing event coming up, and we're going to start putting on some shows with him. I already told you about this. You didn't. But... Yeah, I did, with Frank. Well. Frank's just the one procrastinating, so we might bypass Frank a little bit and just hold the gun, you know, like put the gun to Frank's head. Yeah. You know how you got to do that shit sometimes? How long is this interview? going? Ten long? minutes. Ten minutes? I'm going to give him a few clips. And then call it a show. I'm happy that we're actually going shorter. Usually you get caught up rambling and you're like, oh, and then we wind up in here for like three hours. What? Tony. Tony, what are you doing, dude? Just driving right now, you know. Uh, put your windows up. There you go. Let's go windows up and we're AC. Trying, we're trying to run a fucking goddamn show here. <laughs> windows up, seatbelt. Lock, we're good to go. No, take your seatbelt off. Take chan- take a chance. Yeah, we don't care take about we don't care about the seatbelt. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you go that way, you can't see both of us. If you go long ways, you can see both of us. But we got you either way. So whatever way works for you. Yeah, you don't see. All right, cool. Me. This yeah. works for me right here. Yeah. So Tony Palmieri, how are you, my man? What's going on, guys? I'm I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we figure you know we wanted to give you a call, shoot the shit. I know you got an event coming up. What's the name of this one? Yeah, so uh, the event we got going on is called the Long Island Classic. Um, it's an amateur boxing tournament uh, or event uh, we're doing at Nassau Community College on October fifth. Um, and basically, we're just trying to find we're just trying to find the top amateur fighters on Long Island. So we're gathering all the local gyms out here, and we're we're putting everybody together to see uh, who's got the skill to be the best. Do you have a fight for me? Do I have a, anytime, you know, I play that all the time, whenever you're ready. <laughs> I'm still an amateur, so I can definitely take one eventually, once I start moving around a little bit again. You get that passbook good, and, and we're all good to go. How's the uh, card shaping up? Uh, the card is good. We we got Currently, we've been in touch with about 12 of the 19 uh, gyms on Long Island, so we're getting a lot of uh, 
a lot of love from a lot of different parts of the island, um, and we're really setting it up so that you're getting some of the best fights Nassau versus Suffolk County has to offer. Why? There's so, only 19 so. boxing gyms on Long Island? Yeah, there's 19 sanctions for USA Boxing right now, um, and we've, we've dealt with about 12 or 13 of them at this point. And uh, we're currently at about 15 total fights for the night, so it should be should be a great night of a lot of exciting fights. Did you find anything from my man Alex Borzell? We're working on it still. Uh, at, at the lightweights, at 95 pounds, it's a little bit difficult, but we're working on it. Bro, he'll take a fight three days before the fight. You know, he don't give a fuck <laughs> that little guy. No, I mean we're we're hoping that you know a lot of people come out and uh, and show some support for the Long Island you know boxing gyms and clubs and USA Boxing. So. Um, we're hoping that from the little guys all the way up to, you know, the master class, we, we get some good good following and good support. What about the big chick, Sarah? Are you find anything for her? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're actually, uh, we had two scheduled uh, female fights. Unfortunately, one fell through. Um, we're hoping the other one, you know, sticks through. But uh, we're definitely open to male or female uh, fights. Um, anything that would put on a good show is what we're looking for. Well, I threw you the one girl, Sarah Thomas. Did you find anything for her? Yeah, we're we're working on her as well. We're working on her as well. Oh, it's a headache, right? When you start doing your own yeah. shit. Yeah, matchmaking is a uh, is a process for sure, but uh, it's all part of the love of the game, you know. So now, in your past work, you never really did matchmaking before. No, in, in the past, uh, I was more more event production, um, uh, event production, marketing, promotion, stuff like that. Um, so this is the the uh, the full full circle here uh, with matchmaking included and all that. Yeah, so I was telling Menace, we've been long overdue. we got to rattle up Frank's cage a little bit, but we want to start putting on some MMA shows as well. Yeah, uh, the, 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 so the company I'm doing this through is called Elite Empire Promotions. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Elite Empire Promotions, Inc. Um, and that right now is basically what we're running, our amateur uh, you know, event through. Um, but we're definitely looking to expand that in the future um, outside of just the long Island area as well as into other combat sports so there's opportunity everywhere it's just a matter of putting it all together okay okay so now this one will be at Nassau Community College you said yeah Nassau Community College October 5th uh, doors open at 5 30 first uh, you know first match will start at about six o'clock and uh, we're going to go throughout the night with some some really exciting and thrilling fights where is that now Nassau Community College that's uh in Garden City um uh, right in right in the center of Garden City, uh, I want to say it's one Education Drive. It's the address. Uh, you can't miss it. Um, it's going to be in the in the main gymnasium. So we got a big facility. Uh, we're looking to fill the place and uh, get a lot of people there. All right. So Nassau Community College in Garden City, Elite Empire Promotions, the Long Island Classic. Right. That covers all the bases. That's the one. Nassau versus Suffolk County, five one six versus six three one. Where are you heading to right now? You're heading out of class? What do you? I, I thought you were done with school. No, I, actually, I got one more year left, uh, finishing up law school at Hofstra. Um, I'm heading home from class right now, and then uh, I'll finally be done with the textbook. Do you use that as a pickup line for the ladies? Like, I'm a, going to law school. Yeah, you know, a little wink or two. It never hurts. Wow, a wink or two. Yeah, th <laughs> this is going to be the, long, uh, the menace and the man legal counsel eventually. Um, now... Is one wink stronger than two winks, or vice versa? You really just got to feel it out, you know. Right? Feel. I mean, it's, it's, uh, okay. Just a it's case by case basis. Okay. Well, yeah, we don't want to get Tony in trouble. You have a girl, right? Yes, yes, I do. I yes. have a girlfriend. Oh, she, I was kidding. Great. Well, yeah. you know, I got to just clear well, that up. Well, that's probably how he got her. He'll get backhanded when he gets home. That's probably how he got. <laughs> that's probably how he got her. No? Yes. Oh, Tony's got some charm. He's a good-looking dude. Very charismatic. And like, how old are you? You're young as fuck, right? Uh, yeah, I'm 24. 24 yeah, so years old. He's a kid. Yeah, but what if? What if what? What if he beat you up? I would never fight Tony. <laughs> Tony's uh, our legal counsel. He'll uh, fucking sue me. Why would I do Tony, that? It's, <laughs> Tony, it's Tony, Tony, Tony. It's an amateur fight. What'd you say? You're doing an amateur fight. Have I ever done an amateur no, fight? No, no, no. You're, you're he's talking about the show, the Long Island Classic. Yes, yes, yes. The show, yeah. It's, a, it's an amateur fight. Amateur uh, card. Right on. You're invited, Menace, as well. That's what we also wanted to do is extend the invitation out to a professional athlete like yourself. Wow. wow. When, yeah, is yeah it, we'd, love, we'd love to have you come down and wink at some of the, you know, some of the fans out there. Wow. Is it Friday or Saturday? It's a Saturday night. Uh, right. uh, doors, like I said, doors at 530. 
30 first, first bout at 6, and uh, we'll go through the night until all the fights fights are done. Kid-friendly? Kid-friendly, very kid-friendly. Yep, absolutely. All right, so there's a chance you might see Menace there, whether or not he has the, the little ones. <laughs> but also, even Tony was saying, if you wanted to come to the fights Friday night at the Paramount, he was like, yo, if you and Menace come, I'll fucking get you guys announced and shit. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, I don't know if Menace will be there, but I'll be there with my boy Lenny. Lenny's coming with me. I'll you mean you're going with Lenny? Lenny. I'm going, no, Lenny's coming with me, and then I'm going with Lenny. Lenny's going to get me in the founder's room. <laughs> You're shot. Am I? Yeah. No, I'm getting Lenny a ticket. I'm getting Lenny into the fight. He's going to snap some photos for us. You know how Lenny is. Lenny's a, uh, um, what's the word? Lenny's like uh, when you have multiple skills. Oof. A renaissance man. Exactly. Lenny's a renaissance man. So Lenny's a man of many, uh, many trades. Lenny is the menace in the man plumber. His his <laughs> wife does watch, love watching the kids. Your kids? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So. Easy cowboy. Let's do it. Dude, listen. I just put smart lights in my house, and I want to play with my kids with the smart lights. But now, would Lenny's would Lenny's smoking hot wife would she watch the kids at your house, or would she you'd have to bring them to his house? It's probably a, a convenience thing. Yeah. So so what? At her house. I don't know. All right, well, we'll play with the idea, Tony. Maybe we'll... Just clip, ma- clip this and, and tag t- tag Lenny in it. Maybe Menace will see you and Friday. But I'm definitely coming out this weekend to watch some of your work. You- awesome, man. I appreciate it. I can't wait to see you. What's your job title right now with Star? Uh, I run all the operations um, and do a little PR as well as marketing for them, uh, graphic design, stuff like that. So, I mean... So Friday night we'll see your event operations, and then we'll see some of your graphic work in the program, all that shit, right? All that good stuff. Yep. You know what I was looking at today? Stickers. What are you looking at? Stickers. Menace, Menace the Man's stickers. Oh, okay. Well, you you already had the condoms, so now you definitely got to go stickers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, we got to start passing them out. I still have a box of them. But I don't use them, so you know how that is. <laughs> but, Tony, you're the man. Let us know one All more right, time. Guys. Let us know one more time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, check us out on uh, Facebook or Instagram at Elite Empire Promotions. Uh, we're running our first event, the Long Island Classic, Nassau County versus Suffolk County, on uh, Saturday, October 5th at Nassau Community College in Garden City. Doors open 5.30. Uh, first bout, 6 o'clock. Tickets on sale now. Check us out. Um, it'll be a great event. I hope to see a lot of you there. All right, I'm a young fighter. How do I get on your card? How do I? Who do I have to contact, and how do I do it? Yeah, so if you're a young fighter, you're looking to get on the card, uh, you can hit us up at EliteEmpirePromotions at gmail.com. Uh, send us all your information, um, your weight class, the amount of bouts you've had, and uh, what gym you're coming from, and uh, we'll, we'll get you over to our matchmaker and make it happen. Shh. Shake and bake. I'm telling you, Tony, try to find something for little Space Monkey, little Alex Borzell. <laughs> Space Monkey's son wants to fight. Uh, I thought I thought you were going to talk about your fat ass. No, why would I call him? Well, who am I talking we about? Already, we already, we already went that into part. that. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I'll I, fight on his card, 100%. When? Uh, the next one. All right. Bet. It's on. Bet. It's on. You Bet. Two. You two fight each other. We'll, we'll make it happen. Be the feature bout. Ooh, would love that. I'd probably get my ass kicked, though. But the first round will be interesting, but then the second and third are going to be all no, mess. No, just start fucking with your <laughs> cardio, you fat piece of shit. Why? You want me to win? Yes. I'm talking about fighting you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, that never happens. Uh, never win. You know how it is, Tony. It's tough to get back uh, in there. And even here, real yeah. quick, shout out your football no, camp for all the he parents. He doesn't know how it is. He's 24. All the parents and whatnot that listen, he's also a football player. You run a football camp, right? Yeah, that's that's over the summer. I run a, a NSCYO flag football camp, uh, usually during the month of July, um, and we do that for kindergarten through eighth grade. And um, we, you know, we teach everybody the fundamentals, the skills of football, in a you know safe non-contact environment. And so that's the new wave these days. So uh, we're just trying to teach everybody the game that I grew up playing and love. So that's that's that. I'll be there next summer. My son, he just started flag football this past fall. He's not amazing. At all? But he'll be amazing eventually. <laughs> I mean... He'll God, be amazing after the camp. All right, God willing. Sure. So if he's not, I get my money back or 
How's that work? We can talk about it. All right, cool. You might be the right. only one. You might be the only one who gets his money back. They'll All have right. that conversation. Well, maybe anyway. we'll make an exception for you. Yeah. All right. All right, shake and bake. All right, Tony Palmieri, you're the man. Thank you for joining us. All right, I we'll appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. I'll see you Friday. For sure. See you Friday. Take care. Peace. Right. He's a good egg, Tony. He is. Agreed, Lassie. So, what else should we talk about? I don't know. Maybe how uh, much I hate you. What? Do you really? No. I feel like you do sometimes. You make fun of me a lot. You make Cause me it's because I'm insecure about my height. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, um, you've seen Weird Science? Uh, no. you never seen Weird Science? I don't know. When the, when the chick casts a spell on the brother, and the brother becomes like a fat ogre, and then she's like, You're really mean to Chet and White. And he's like, It's done out of love. No, you never seen that? No. Nah. All right, well, you'll have to watch that one. Yeah, come over and watch it with me. Not tonight. Another night. You yeah, that's like, why we're not friends. Bro, you seem like you got some other things going on tonight, so you're a little preoccupied. No way. No way. Yes, we'll let the men live his best life. And, uh, yeah, we ran out of time, so we're just going to call this episode. Greg Gillespie, we'll have to get to you next week. <laughs> yep, you fucking <laughs> loser. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I felt like this was a good episode. Menace saved it with Henry Hoof. And uh, hit him with your send-off, Menace. Well. See you later.